Hey everyone, welcome to the United Traders Market Recap. It's Tuesday, October 26th. ES closed around 45.65 today and NQ around 15.541. I'm your host, Tim, and I'm here with your co-host, Kevin. Kevin, how are we doing? Doing wonderful. And today we are joined by the UT Head of Research, David. How are we doing, David? Better than I deserve. All right. Fair enough. And uh, this week's topic will be shipping supply unchained. Where's my stuff? Uh, but before we get into that, let's get into the economic data forecast. Kevin, what do we got coming up? All right. Thanks. Yeah. So for Tuesday, we're looking at mortgage applications, followed by Wednesday, initial jobless claims, GDP annualized, and core PCE. Uh, Thursday, we're looking at personal income, personal spending. And wrapping it up Friday with ISM manufacturing data. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, but there's been a lot of talk about shipping delays lately. All right. Who's stuck in whose canal now? Okay. Well, no canal this time. But uh, David, let me ask you a question. Um, do you think that the global shipping crisis that's going on now only pertains to developed countries? Or is it, is it everywhere? Tim, this is a this global shipping crisis that we're currently experiencing. Um, so it's a global issue. To provide some context, there's roughly 11 billion tons of goods that are transported by ship every year. This represents an average of 1.5 tons per person based on our current global population. Shipping's capacity to transfer goods and materials from where they are produced to where they are ultimately consumed underpins modern society. In regards to the chain of events that has led to this crisis, it isn't just about terminals at ports, but deals with the entire aspect of the supply chain as a whole, from truckers, warehouses, and railroads. In regards to truckers, since that's a main issue in the U.S., Mario Cordero, the former chair of Federal Maritime Commission under the Obama administration, issued a study on congestion in July of 2015. So this isn't um, like an issue that we haven't, <laughs> this came out of nowhere. Um, the issue is well known for many years now, citing the truck's chassis and turn time issues that we're experiencing today. So it's absurd that these drivers are waiting or having to wait a couple hours to get into a terminal. Um, this global shipping crisis has just magnified the issue. Okay. And if you uh, even look at the slides of like the activity from back in, what is this, uh, March compared to October, it's like ridiculous, the amount of ships that are in the in the sea right now. And like clearly backed up at all the ports, it's it's nuts. It's a big influx of a uh, big influx of traffic. Yeah. Over those the time period. It's wild. Absolutely. And add to add on to that, in August alone this year, the Meishan Terminal and Joshan Port, which is the world's third busiest port located in China, which accounts for 25% of the container cargo that goes through the port mm -hmm. halted to a stop for two weeks. Oof. This was due to just a single worker contracting COVID. Are you kidding? <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Yes. And this is the same issue seen in Vietnam's Ho Chi Minh's terminal as well. Um, this domino effect is the reason we, we are in this global crisis now. All right, right on. Well, I appreciate that explanation there. Um, I, I, I just want to ask, you know, initially here, is this buildup due to the amount of actual products being sought after and shipped, or is it due to more so a capacity in the, uh, the ability to ship goods as a whole? I would say it's both. Companies are stockpiling and shipping logistics is complex and is an art. It's one of the oldest industries and is highly effective in most scenarios. Um, but along with bookings taking four weeks to even get on a container ship, um, under normal operations, it will take 20 days for a ship from Shanghai to LA. But now we are experiencing 40 day lead times. Oh um, my God. Yeah. So let's say you guys, um, we need something ASAP. Our company needs something ASAP. Um, let's view an alternative, air freight. According to the Baltic Exchange Air Freight Index, cost of air freight is up 72% year over year for Hong Kong to North America, which is close to $10, kilogram, $10 per kilogram. <laughs> that's pretty nuts. Yeah. Yeah. And that's even after the 
price spike we had due to medical supplies and PPE that had to be rushed to the U.S. hospitals in early 2020, if you guys remember that time. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, like it was yesterday. Dude, and I remember I would I would order stuff that said uh, would be delivered in two days because it was Prime. It was Amazon Prime, and it wouldn't come for like five weeks. And I was like, dude, what the f- what is going on? <laughs> and this is like that tenfold, I think. But uh, hopefully it you know subsides soon. But um, can you kind of see where like what sectors seem to be impacted the most, or is it kind of like everything? Yeah, I believe it's across the board from raw materials to durable goods. Um, but in regards to consumer goods, like Nike shoes, for example, the majority of it is is manufactured in Vietnam, but has which has the same COVID protocols as China ports. If one person gets COVID, they have to halt the port. So anything that's being imported or exported could see an impact of prolonged increased costs. Well, you know, speaking of cost, would you expect a lot of these costs to ship being passed down to consumer or are these big companies basically going to eat it all? Well, Kevin, um, so we know that shipping costs has skyrocketed. It's up 300% year over year. Jesus. <laughs> wow. But the majority of these importers have year long contracts, so they won't feel the pressure quite yet. But if this continues, they will. And ultimately, the cost will be passed on to the consumer. But now companies are looking for longer term commitments, two to three years, um, to bring more stability and predictability on shipping cost. That's a lot of pressure. That is a it lot is. of pressure. Yeah. But, you know, speaking of pressure, though, how does this surge in, uh, in energy crude pricing affect, affect these costs to ship? Well, tankers that carry most things like like crude or coal for coal plants are designed to carry these products and to retrofit them to carry cargo isn't entirely impossible, but will take time. Um, but we believe that there isn't a direct correlation except for the cost of cost, increased cost in fuel. Crude is, crude is mainly just chuggling along higher or chuggling higher due to OPEC plus policies and reduced stockpiles. All right. Fair enough. And I would imagine that one tanker uses a lot of fuel. So I'm sure that cost does add up. Have you seen those things up close? Dude, they're ridiculous. Massive. I've never seen one up close, but yeah, it's, I've it's seen like, photos. It's like a floating city, basically. Just oh, stuff God. your goods on it and push a button. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so pertaining to holiday season shopping, what can, uh, what can we expect as consumers in regards to the product availability and uh, maybe even pricing? Yeah, so we are forecasting that these delays and bottlenecks will persist throughout the end of the year. I think we aren't going to see the same discounted prices as major retailers and wholesalers will be managing their supply more efficiently. Um, in regards to the holidays, by shopping early, consumers can avoid product availability shortages. Um, so personally, one of my habits is waiting till the last minute to buy gifts for my family. But this year, I'm already starting to purchase for the upcoming holidays in October. Right. Get ahead of the rush, of course. Do we know maybe if when this is all over, uh, people that are companies that have been manufacturing and stockpiling all this the stuff that they can't get shipped out. Do you think there's going to be just a spike in supply and then there'll just be a drop in the cost of these goods and, and companies will just be dumping these goods for like pennies on the dollar? Yeah. I think if it, if this, um, if their inventory isn't carefully managed, there'll be inventory write-offs or yep. Yeah, even discounts given to the consumer to move that excess inventory. Cause um, these companies don't want excess inventory in their warehouses. It increases the cost for storage. Not, yeah, storage right, cost. Right. And I did just Google just for uh, giggles how big one of the gas tanks is on these things, and it says one and a half million gallons, which is <laughs> quite uh, pretty quite, absurd. Yeah. That's a lot of, of fuel. That is a lot of fuel. Good, good lord. Um, so do we have any idea how long this will last? Do you know if it's coming up to an end or are we uh, just scratching the surface here? Yeah, so we have forecasted that this crisis will last until Q2 2020, where we'll see the we'll see consumer demand or consumer purchasing tapering down. 
But at this point in time, we are in peak season. So we have high volume of holiday purchasing coming up. Um, and it doesn't help that China's going through an energy crisis right now and trying their best to control coal prices to keep the lights on in these manufacturing plants. And along with us being typhoon season in the Pacific right now, which forecasts are estimating it being high, um, being 40% higher this year compared to 2020. So it's but, like the, the perfect storm going on right now. Exactly. Oh boy. All right. Well, uh, Kev, do you have any additional questions you'd like to ask or? No, no, that's about it. I'm, I'm more so worried about that package you had ordered. <laughs> you know, how long hey. are we going to be waiting for it? I don't know, man. We'll, we'll see when my potato slippers arrive. I'll let you know. Uh, it's getting cold out there. Yeah, it is. David, thank you for joining us. Really appreciate it. Um, and thank you, everyone, for listening to the United Traders Market Recap. And we will uh, see you next week. Have a good one. Special thanks to our research team, our producers, our audio and video production team, our editor, and our team lead, TJ. 